resiliency, heat resistance of five minutes. Oh my god, I forgot. I gotta carry this damn thing all the way back over there to set it. But I know that some of this shit is like super difficult to do. Oh no, 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 no. That's not no, ideal. No, 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 it's not. Oh, oh my god. Very nervous now. Oh, I'm gonna get across it, Max. Max, I'm across it. I finally made it, Max. Yep. In tonight's episode, we have made it to what seems to be an open cave. We uh, actually made it here by eating some spicy foods, uh, sponsored here by Ghost Pepper. Uh, these are quite delicious foods. They will keep your body warm for uh, five minutes at a time while you're out in the cold. Uh, <laughs> Molly's like, what the fuck was that? <clears throat> and, uh, like I said, uh, we'd make it to the tower, and uh, now we're just gonna just relax out to some smooth jazz. Yeah, man. Have a groovy night. I don't think that's jazz. Ah, oh, shit. I got my genres mixed up again. <clears throat> Damn genres. <laughs> Alright, let's go in and see what this thing has to be waiting for. Welcome back, everyone, to, we do to it, it's play. Spring. To engineers play. This is a special ASMR <coughs> episode. That's how we play Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so as promised, we are at a temple. Yay! And we got to go in. All we did was eat some hot soup. We were able to not be cold, and we were good to go. Because, yeah, that's how eating hot food works. Dude, it is. I mean, you ever eaten a hot pepper and then start sweating? I mean, yeah, I've gotten sweaty, but I doubt I, you know, you probably wouldn't be able to like survive the tundra because of it. Yeah, I'm like, you don't know. Go eat a ghost pepper and then go walk around in your snowshoes. I mean, I will let you try that. I don't wanna. <laughs> Dude, that's what's in the shrine. I am Keith Nibu. Crayon Trials. Ooh, I wonder if this is going to be the slow-mo stuff. We'll never know. Actually, we might. Once I put my box in here, tell me everything about this place. Box. It's Sheik's Fire. Distilling Ruin. Ooh. Should have distilled Ruin. Yes. I like how this is the, what the treasure noise is used for now. Just distilling ruins. What'd I get? <gasps> Create a pillar eyes from a water surface. Ooh. That's cool. But like, what would it do? <laughs> what'd it do? <laughs> okay. So we change between this, yeah. Okay. So like... Oh, shit. Can I do that while I'm like on it? Looks like it. Freeze that hoe. Yes. Nice. Dang. Oh, that's effective. Now I see what that's for. It was super effective. Yay. <laughs> I, doubt, I don't think this is going to go all the way up. I didn't need it to. I knew what I was doing. <laughs> oh, shit. Do I have a weapon equipped? Uh, do you not have the sword equipped? Oh, yeah. For some reason, I had that on. Oh. Woo. They got the heavy firepower. Oh my god. Wow. Yeah. Oh, schnackies. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. This sword's a beast. Ancient screw. Alright, where are we going, Link? Oh, uh, looks like you'll have to get creative with your power. Get creative with. Oh, okay. I see what I gotta do. But. I don't know. Seesaw. On a seesaw. What the hell am I gonna have to. Oh, I guess if I put it up to the one side. There you go. Freeze it. And now I can climb up here to the stairs. Last for? I don't know. That long. Well, what is that? Oh, shnikes. 
Yeah. Let's go get that since we're here. Use this to climb on me. Uh, I think there was one you also missed a little ways back before you lifted the uh, traveler spear. <laughs> yeah, I'm working on it. Okay. Oh, that's cool. It just stays in there. Where else would it go? All right, screw these tree branches. Yeah, I don't know why you're really holding on to those. Well, you never know. Huh. I didn't know I could use that. <laughs> why are you hitting yourself? <laughs> why are you hitting yourself? For real. All right, so now I got that. Yeah, Ooh, go, look, tree branches. But go back to where, like, around oh, the they corner. They stay active pretty long. Yeah, go go back around the corner to the right where you lift at the, the gate. Here? Yeah. Oh wow, they like really do stay for a long time. Like permanent. Yeah, and then look left. Left, 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 up. Oh, no, never mind. I thought that was an opening. Alright, well, thanks for making me come all the way back You're here for welcome. nothing. It's <laughs> what our fans love about this channel. Yep, Backtracking for nothing. Yeah. Oh well, it's not like you really lost anything. Oh, I lost all that time that I wasted to do that. Yeah, that, that couple of seconds was just enough for us to lose the three people watching this episode. It could be more than three this time. It could be four. Yeah, true, true, true. We're true. growing up as a channel. Right. We got, we got so far this year, we've followers. gotten one new subscriber. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty pretty amazing. We just need that one good kick. <laughs> but thank you to all of you that have been with us so far. And supported the channel. We appreciate it. We will continue playing games because, honestly, we like to. We greatly appreciate all the likes, comments, and additional subscriptions. Yes. You're not doing any of this. In the name of the goddess Elia, <laughs> I bestow something upon you. Yeah, I kind of dropped the ball there. My bad. Oh, look. He gave me another one Got of the these. the second treasure. I know. Like, why is this? How are you supposed to give it to the old man if it's inside of you? I guess he can just oh, rip it out with his paraglider. Oh, the, God. The treasure was inside of you all along. Man, God, a smile upon you. I love how I have to do all this shit just for this little-ass orb. Talk to these old-ass people. Well, you gotta, you gotta you know, get introduced to your new ability. Yeah. Where I'd be able to free shit and lift up stuff. Oh, you know it'd be great to have right now? A jacket. Uh... Damn, how is that already expired? Uh, uh, it expired like right before we got or you got out. Damn. So you probably want to look at the map to see. Oh, dude, what am I doing? I can just teleport out of here. Yeah, but. Hmm. Yeah, I guess it would maybe be shorter to go from the other side. Jesus, I forgot what that green one was. That was that one we saw when we got up to the the hill. I guess I can go for the red one. Well, you should be able to go to the blue one now because you're uh. The yeah, that's going to take forever. Whatever. And now we'll get to the blue one. Nice. So, uh, I had a friend that, uh, I was calling him Rando. Uh, he used to... <laughs> they got old Rando, man. <laughs> oh, ma, ma, I got Rando. <laughs> but Rando used to sell suits for a company that treated their employees like garbage. But, uh... One of the things that they tried to encourage everyone to sell was um, a seven-pair shoe rotation. A um, seven-pair shoe rotation? Yeah, it was I kind of like uh, being able to wear shoes and kind of let them rest in between uses and have some variety throughout the weekend. Uh, okay, yeah, I got gotcha. you. But uh, the joke I kind of came up with and you know, kind of bounced it back and forth with them, but... Uh, was that seven pairs is just not enough shoes. It, you need more. So I came up with a ridiculous uh, pair, shoe pair rotation. Which is? So it, it's a whole thing. So the, the goal of a proper rotation is a lot of time for shoes to rest. But more importantly, a proper shoe rotation is a great way to display your power and wealth. The first thing that people notice about you are your shoes. It's a proven science. And the last thing you want people to think about you is that you're a peasant. How many days do you think are in a week, Corey? Seven. Wrong, it's seven. And... <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? 
Okay. Someone's just reading from a script at this point. What the hell? Yeah, I did write it down so it'd be a little more coherent. <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah, it's seven. Um, and, well, you need a shoe for every single day of that week. If someone sees you wear the same shoe twice in the same week, what are they going to think? That you get your baby supplies from 7-Eleven? That you're welfare rich? That you get your own sna- you take your own snacks to the movies and call it budget date night? Maybe. But I do know that first single people, the first thing that people are going to think is, wow, that guy's a peasant. So Jesus. the bare minimum number of shoes you should have in your shoe rotation is seven pairs. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Seven pairs of shoes, that seems like a lot. Damn it. It does seem like quite a lot there, <laughs> chop shop spokesman. <laughs> and, uh, well, yeah, you might be thinking it's a lot, but, uh, that, damn it, ha- having the frickin' thing come up really screwed the, the flow up. <laughs> <laughs> no, guys, we don't script our show. <laughs> no, we normally don't. <laughs> now, you might be thinking to yourself, seven pairs of shoes, that seems like a lot. And to that I say, you know nothing, peasant. The key to making sure your shoes have had sufficient time to rest is, well, time. Your shoes should be allowed to rest for at least one week after you wear it. Scientific studies show that leathers and shoes will retain moisture for at least seven days, and that wearing a shoe just one extra time and exposing it to the additional sweat will irreparably damage the leather. Oh my god. Yeah, so this leads to shoes that smell worse than a used 7-Eleven baby diaper. Not to mention, you risk damaging the structural integrity of the shoe, so by skimping on your rotation, you risk having shoes that not only smell like a dirty diaper, but look like a derby, dirty diaper. No one wants a dirty yeah. diaper shoe. Right, and that's just something that a peasant would wear. So what are you trying to sell us here? I'm trying to get you an appropriate amount of shoes that you need. So so we're not finished. Seven is enough to support healthy shoe lifestyle, but it's not enough to prevent you from looking like a peasant. As I previously stated, each shoe needs one week to rest between pairs. We know that. This means that Uh, From week to week, you'll be wearing the same shoes on the same day. Hello, people pick up on patterns very easily. It's eugenics. (laughs) You need to be able to throw everyone's pattern recognition off. And to do that, you need more shoes. To do that effectively, you will need to double the amount of shoes in the rotation. So now I'm talking another 21 pairs of shoes. That's not a matter of uh, having shoes that you can wear within the same week on different days. Uh, remember, you don't want people to think you're a peasant. Having 28 pairs of shoes will allow you to properly rotate your shoes week to week in a way that keeps shoes healthy and prevents those around you from picking up on any patterns that may develop uh, an inadequate shoe rotation. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, we're not done. <laughs> but what the fuck? How are we not done? <laughs> <laughs> because you need a proper shoe rotation. I made it to my second tower. <laughs> Throughout that log ass story. I saw none of it. <laughs> Are you still in a cold area? Or? Yeah, I'm still in a cold area. Ah. Um, well, at this point, we've solved the issue of sweaty shoes and people picking up on lowly peasant patterns, but we still have more to cover. You need to have the proper shoe for the proper use, the proper season, and the weather. Assume that the current rotation we build is your standard shoe set. You get up, you get dressed, you go to work, you come home, and you do it in style. But what happens if it rains? Now you've ruined a pair of shoes because you wore a standard shoe in the rain. Your standard shoes aren't meant to take that kind of abuse. Um Oh but, my god. Ooh, this This is the a slow down time. Yeah. Anyway. Uh blah 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 blah. Um But what happens if it rains? Now you've ruined a pair of shoes uh, because you wore a standard shoe in the rain. Your standard shoes aren't meant to take that kind of abuse. But relax, I'm not saying we need to tack on another 28 pairs of shoes, one for each of your standard shoes. It's not like the weather is always going to be as wet as it was in Charlotte from the fall of 2018 to the spring of 2019. (laughs) Though, if you do live in an area with that kind of precipitation, you may want to pad these next numbers a little bit. But you only need to add an additional 14 pairs of shoes per season. Uh, your summer water shoes uh, will be made out of a slightly different material than what your winter water shoes would be. And you don't want to mix the two. They, like some, you wear your winter ones in the summer, they're going to get hot, and it's just uncomfortable. And likewise, your summer ones, you know, they're not going to be good for the winter temperatures. Oh, shit. Okay. But you could argue that the temperatures in spring and fall, you could use the same 14 pairs for the two seasons. And to that I say, yes, yes, you could. 
And you should do that, you peasant. Not only are the materials... Oh, shit! <laughs> Not only are the materials different for those shoes that you would have for the different seasons, but the style should match the season that you're in. So it's just not smart to use your fall ones in the spring and vice versa. Oh, fuck. So also, while I'm on the topic of styles, your standard shoe rotation should also be season appropriate. So to account for weather and temperature, we're looking at 168 pairs of shoes. 168 pairs of shoes. Yeah. To do a proper rotation in bad weather climates. Well, I mean, it's a start. It uh, seems like an excessive start. <laughs> no, remember, Corey, you don't want to look like a peasant when you're wearing shoes. I mean, I might. <laughs> um, no, you, you just don't want that. So at this point, you're probably mistakenly thinking, "That's it, we're done." And I want to slap you for that thought. After all this time, you're still thinking like a peasant. You know how many types of shoes there are? <laughs> well, it's got to be over 168, apparently. No, there's eight different styles. You got your Oxfords, or uh, Balmoral, if you're Dutch. Uh, your Derbies, your Loafers, your Cap Toes, Monk Straps, Dress Boots, and Wingtips. And for the extra special occasions, Formal Pumps. Now, I'm not saying you should multiply your current rotation for all eight styles. I recommend that. But there is such a thing as excessive. But you should increase the quantity by at least 75% to account for a healthy distribution of the different types of shoes. And that brings the total up to 294 pairs of shoes, but let's call it an even 300. Yeah, it, let's call it an even... Th why the fuck did we get to 300? <laughs> the math is there. I'll do it out in the video. Oh my uh, god. But yeah, let's just call it an even 300 because there's no such thing as excessive when it comes to your status. I mean, there might be... <laughs> And finally, uh, the last the thing that brings us yeah, and finally that brings us to the last key aspect of a proper shoe rotation. Some experts argue that it's the most important aspect of the shoe. Those experts are idiots, but it's certainly important. Color. Those experts are idiots. <laughs> Fuck I mean, those it's guys. important, but it's not the most important. Uh, color can make or break your entire wardrobe. And you've got three main style shoe color choices. Burgundy or Oxblood, as some people seem to call it. Uh, that color is good for casual, less formal environments. Brown, which is a good versatile color that can be used for both for formal and casual settings. Holy shit, that was so cool. Right? And then there's black, which is, you know, it's just the go-to for the formal professional setting. Yeah. So there are other colors as well, and they should absolutely be considered to provide a versatile rotation that can have you cover for any occasion without being repetitive. I personally recommend you should increase your collection by 150% to properly account for color. And that brings us to total number of shoes of the ultimate shoe rotation to 750 pairs. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, that, that seems about reasonable. 750 pairs of shoes. Yep. That's and a lecture on why you should have the 750 pairs of shoes. Well, I mean, the science is there. I don't think it's science. <laughs> it's absolutely science. It sounds like mumbo-jumbo to me. It's all backed and Rando would back it. I don't think Rando would back it. Oh, he absolutely would. He said I should go be a shoe salesman. <sighs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah, people would be like, dude, if you stop telling that story, I'll buy a pair of shoes. <laughs> uh. Top notch, bravo. Good infomercial. It's like Bloomberg. You paid for a 95-minute slot, <laughs> and you got it. <laughs> uh, well, I think it's, uh, it's about time for next time. Yay! Next time on Two Engineers Play, we'll talk about more shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> Toad. We hope you've enjoyed this video. If you want to help save the Mushroom Kingdom, then please support this channel by liking this video and subscribing to this channel. Bye!